Uh, anyway, so yeah, have a talk, um, just a small intro about um, uh, Light Build and Drip Off Canvas. So Light Build is a templating um, a plugin for your, when you create your uh, content type, um, you have like a managed display and you can rearrange the fields. And Off Canvas is a like JavaScript CSS kind of library built into to Drupal Core as well. <laughs> okay, I'll just have to go really close then, I guess. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go over that, that anyway. The, that was just introduction. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, so I'm from Wagga Wagga, um, and I came to Canberra for work. So um, the company then was Delphi Digital, um, and now I, um, bought out by EY. Um, and I've worked on a few different uh, technologies, like Migrate and Solar and things like that. Um, and on uh, my spare time, I like going for park runs. Um, playing soccer and playing um, board games as well. So this is uh, just a small agenda of what we're going to go over. So we're going to um, talk about yeah, just the introduction to Light Builder, how it compares to the Space Suite, um, and then a few notes about our revisions um, and how to like group fields, and then a few like customizations with some uh, some code on the screen, which I'll provide a link as well, and then a demo. So first of all, uh, view modes. Uh, so what's a view mode? A view mode is a way of uh, showing a specific layout in a specific way in a specific context. So you could say on this view, I will have like this layout, but then on this other um, page, or uh, um, uh, you have a different layout, so it shows a, it's where rearranging fields, uh, hiding some, showing others. So I've got a mini diagram there with some uh, s squares, so representing fields, so you can have like, you know, Two, two group together and one at the top, and then you can like rearrange it depending on different um, uh, yeah, view mode that you're using. So view modes are um, yeah, the different ways of showing your, your content. Um, and so there's a few different plugins that you can use to display view modes. So one is the, this is the built-in one, and TV display. Um, so it's very limited. Um, you, can, you can rearrange your built-in configuration fields but not, not anything else. Um, so like not your teaser links, your book navigation, they're like kind of hard coded into the template. But you can rearrange like the body and the comments and things. Uh, and you can't like duplicate the, the fields. Um, there are like some other kind of small workarounds you can do if you want to like duplicate the fields and things. If you have like the CTools module um, installed, the CTools block, which is um, a dependency of path auto. So there are like some small workarounds, but uh, yeah, more, by and large, uh, you cannot like, replicate the uh, duplicate the fields and things, which is um, important. Sometimes you have some uh, fantastic designs and you need to like put them in different areas to show and hide, but you can't do that with the default layout. Uh, so now this is uh, Layout Builder. So this is the, the one I'm going to talk about. Uh, so this is the pros and cons, as you can see on the screen. So it allows you to have uh, different fields. You can have different uh, like sections, uh, and different uh, se every section can have its own kind of layout. So you can um, have like two column layout or like two rows or three rows or, or whatever. Um, you can create your layouts in your theme. Um, and then you can also, the biggest uh, attraction is, um, is adding blocks. So you can add blocks between the fields as well, as well as duplicating them. Um, and also because Layout Builder is in Drupal Core, you can use it on Gar CMS and anywhere you, you, you want as well. Oh, you can also uh, override the placement um, per entity. So you have to have the same sections. Um, so if you've got two cold, it's supposed to be two cold, but you can decide, oh, in this uh, content type, I'm going to reverse the order, uh, but still two cold. And just a few notes about the note display suite. So that's another um, popular module. Sorry. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit um, yeah, dated. Um, there's a few bugs and stuff in, in the display suite. Uh, you can do um, some things like you can duplicate some fields and things and use tokens. Um, but yeah, there's a few uh, yeah, issues. Uh, it has limitations with like um, block context uh, and it doesn't um, yeah, kind of play well with like context module. Uh, so yeah, like metadata doesn't um, sometimes translate that well. So yeah, there's a few, a few issues with that. Um, and it also doesn't really show well with the uh, revisions as well, the, the markup's a little bit different. Uh, so now I'm going to go a little bit over what, um, how to use Lat Builder. Um, so very easy. Uh, you just go to your manage display on your content type, and down the bottom of the screen there's a use Lat Builder. So obviously you have to en enable the module, but other than that you, you just tick the box. 
the page will refresh and then you go uh, yeah, into the manage display button at the top of the page. So usually you'll have your fields there on the screen, but instead you've got this uh, button which takes you to another screen. And so this is the, the screen where you rearrange your fields. Um, so I've just got like my default content type there, which is a couple of different fields. But you can see that there's a one section there. You can add additional section. Um, you can drag and drop the fields like because it's got the dotted line. Um, and when you click add section, that right sidebar will show up uh, with your different uh, layouts that you can't currently have in the system. But yeah, you can add more through to the theme layer as well. And also other modules. But if you're uh, using GovCMS, there's not too many um, add-ons for Layer Builder. I think there's Layer Builder restrictions in, in the distribution. Um, but yeah, if you are uh, yeah, just want to use Drupal Core, then uh, yeah, you can only add the layouts through the, the theme layer. Uh, this is just an example of a two-column layout, uh, just to show that it, you can actually visualize the, the layout uh, while you're editing it. Um, you can also, there was beforehand, there was a uh, show content preview button at the top of the, the page, which will show create some dummy content, um, but not always that helpful because sometimes like it will show like lots of content. So like body content, it will show like five or six paragraphs and you're like, oh, I usually don't put six paragraphs into that field, just like one or two. Uh, but you can give like, it's a little bit of, you know, out of the box functionality. It's not, not too bad for seeing what, what potentially could go in it. Um, and you can also in these sections, you can have the like different features. So this one has, you can configure the, uh, like the column in the middle where it, where it goes. Um, and then the CSS can apply to that as well. So now um, to revisions. So uh, there, there's a module called field group, which you probably used a lot. Um, it's not compatible with Layer Builder. So uh, if you want to group fields, you either have to add like multiple sections to group your fields into different, uh, different divs, um, or you can use uh, the views block. So you can add a views block as your field then pass the uh, content, the, so the, the node ID as the context for that view, which will display the current node again, uh, and then choose what field you want. But views doesn't currently support uh, revisions as a, uh, as a contextual filter. So there's some limitations with it, um, but if you want to use, um, but you can use revisions as showing like the top level or, or um, using the C tools um, module as well, it can provide a, another block which can show the view mode. Um, so you have one node and then you have another, the same node within it again, but with a different view mode. That's another way of creating um, like element, a hidden element around your fields as well. So just, just a note about that before we go on. So this is how to add a view block. This is one way of doing it. So I'm gonna show both ways through the view block and then through the uh, nested view mode. So you just have your view block here. You just add your contextual filter at the top using the, the content ID, so the node ID. Then at the bottom of the, the page, uh, there's like in the pop-up, um, you specify the validation criteria and select content. So once the select content is selected, then when you add the block, the, the option will show up for the, just pass that contextual value to that context, which, uh, which you can see on this screen here. So in your sidebar, when you um, choose add block in the like, builder screen and the manage display, um, there's like your different blocks and things that show up. So you can see views is there. Um, and then the content ID is there as well. So just to note, the Layout Builder view, that's just my dummy name that I chose, doesn't actually uh, have to be called that. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, so for the entity view, so the nested um, display, uh, to do that, so you create your, another view mode on top of what you're uh, showing. So you might have like the full page view and maybe you'll have like sidebar view or something. Um, then you would show that as a field as well. So you go add the view mode. Um, it's a pretty strong button. There we go. Yep. Um, and then you choose your uh, entity view at, from the chaos tools from the C tools module, and then choose that your your view mode. So I put fill group in, in, but it can be whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you just yeah press um, add block. Uh, there's one thing to note about it. Um, of course, if you're using like the yeah Drupal core things, there's always a few like hacks and stuff you have to do to get around these things. Um, I'll show. There's a link to these um, code uh, after like at the end of the slide, so you don't need to worry too much about uh, you know remembering what it is. Um, but yeah, there's a few no notes to uh, 
yeah, to take into consideration. So by default, the title will be displayed again because there's obviously two, two nodes shown. So you can set the page variable to, to true um, because in the default node um, tweak file, uh, it will um, usually when it renders, there's like the page title block. And so if it's true, it will assume that it's a full page view so it won't re-render re the, the, um, the title. But when it's like, yeah, in a um, nested block, it will be false and so it will print again. But actually, it's in this full page node, right? So you don't actually want it shown again. So there are a few ways of getting around it. So you can use pre-process, you can use that uh, node tweak override, or you can just simply write some CSS where it looks for the <coughs> node div. And uh, if that node div is within another node div, then you can just, yeah, just hide it away. Oops, there we go. Uh, so onto the, a few customizations you can do with Layer Builder. Um, so out of the box, uh, you have the uh, bundle classes. So that's like, you have the node and then you have the content type. So you have node dash dash my content type. Um, but the layouts are kind of in nested divs. So you can get a bit long with the CSS rules. And so if you want that second level of the, uh, lay, um, of your, yeah, the second screenshot, which has this much simpler CSS rule, um, this is some sample code that I've developed that you can, can do that. So to do that, you've got to create your own layout. Uh, so you've got to, so for a very simple version of it, you just copy and paste the one call um, layout from the layout discovery module or the layout builder module. Um, and then, so copy and paste the tweak file, and then we've got to create a layouts file, file and then the layout plugin uh, file as well. So one is you just copy and paste, the other two will go over the code for it. So the first one is just a copy and paste. There's no changes here, you just copy and paste literally. And then for your layouts uh, YAML file, uh, so this is what you put in. So it's and more or less copy and paste, but you've got to adjust a few of the, the keys. So you've got to make sure that your template file uh, matches that template um, key at the top. So that's the name of your file. The folder, uh, the path, sorry, path key, that's the path in your templates folder in your theme. And then the, the class key, that's the name space to your, uh, to the, uh, uh, to your PHP class, which is going to add the actual uh, HTML classes. Yeah, so this is our um, plugin uh, HTML class, sorry, uh, PHP class. So I'm just going to go quickly a little bit over it. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a class there with a few uh, use commands. And then there's a few uh, different methods you got to use to use the class, uh, the PHP class. Um, so one is default configuration, build configuration. Um, Sorry, build form, validate form. Um, yeah, and think, oh, and then build command as well. So this is the default configuration. So that's like when you first set it up, it will merge all the settings together and that's just like your default. The next one is the build configuration. So that's on that right sidebar that I showed earlier with, um, we had like initiative label and then on the two column layout, it had the uh, different ratios that you can use for your two column uh, like where you want it, 30% on one side, 70% on the other, et cetera. Um, so this one, no, no, no real change here for this one, it's just copy and paste. Um, I like seeing what the current section layout is being used, so I just add a like um, H static, uh, just a label there on the screen, um, but there's no, com no real change required for this, for build configuration. And then we've got validate, so nothing to, to validate there, so that's just a copy and paste because it's implementing the the plugin form interface. Um, and then we've got the submit configuration. So this is where a little bit of the magic happens. Um, so we've got to ex have extra method to extract the, uh, the bundle and like the NT type and a few other things like that. And then finally we assign it to the, to the settings uh, configuration. So that gets saved into your exported configuration when, when you save the, uh, the section. So this is what the, uh, what my version of it, is, it looks like of the, um, custom extra properties. So I split onto two slides. There might be another way of doing it, um, but yeah, this is the way that's worked for me. So I won't go over the code really, but it just gets one of the sections and then extracts the contextual values and then assigns them uh, back uh, to the return uh, variable. So you've got the view mode, the bundle, and the entity type there. This is our, um, the build function. So this is actually what happens when you get, when the section is displayed. Um, so yeah, we literally just extract the values, which is the entity type, the bundle and things. Um, and then we just add it to the um, attributes class array. 
Um, and another thing to note, um, so sections don't have the classes, but also fields don't really have classes um, much as well. So your generic NTV display does have classes for your field divs, uh, but Lab Builder fields don't. So if you need extra level of customization there, uh, this is one way of, of um, adding extra classes here. I've just shortened it. Um, you might not want to call it LB dash dash field, maybe call it Lab Builder block or something. Uh, but yeah, just to shorten so you can see it on the screen. It does have some classes, but they're like really, really specific. So uh, yeah, if you want to like just target say body on all the um, all the layouts, then yeah, you need to uh, add an extra level of um, extra target um, CSS class. Um, so the first uh, example I went through was around adding HTML classes. This is another version of it um, where we, you can add like your custom HTML classes. So sometimes you have like the same uh, node in two different places, but mm -hmm. on this certain one, you want like you know different color or something, um, and it's just like a once off. So uh, this is a, um, yeah the configuration required to put that in your Lab Builder uh, plugin. So you just got the extra custom classes uh, string. It's just empty in your default configuration. Then uh, yeah, just got another uh, text field um, setting so that you can put your your classes in, and then um, yeah. Basically, you submit it and you just store it. There's nothing really to it. And then finally, build, you just assign, just like the other one, assign to the classes attribute um, array. Uh, so on to Drupal off canvas. Uh, so Drupal canvas, yeah, as I said earlier, is a like module CSS um, kind of library built into Drupal. So it's not actually a module. It's like a series of like libraries that you can just reference uh, in, your, in your theme layer or your module. Um, and so uh, as you can see on the screen, um, this is just a screenshot from the Drupal.org documentation site. Um, there's a few different versions of it, so I'm just going to focus on the off canvas, but the other one's like modal pop ups as well. Uh, and so, yeah, it just shows on the right hand side, um, and you can put different uh, elements into it. This one has a form, but you might want to just put some supplementary information so the page doesn't refresh. Um, another um, bug to be aware of we always love those bugs. Uh, so, with the views block, views page, I mean, sorry. So when you'd use the drip off canvas, um, usually you Ajax the content in. So it would be a link with some different classes. And then when you click the link, instead of actually going to the page, uh, it will do an Ajax request to that uh, URL, fetch that content, put it into the sidebar. So one easy way of doing it is just having a view page. So you just have like your contextual uh, values that you pass to it in your link. Um, but however, there's a bug in Drupal core where the title doesn't get converted from a render array into a string, it will just get casted directly to uh, a string. So you'll just get like this title called array. So actually we need to like make sure it's converted to a string first. So one way of doing that in the theme layout, so as I said before, um, I mostly work on GovCMS. And so uh, there's probably other ways of doing it, but yeah, element info alter you can use in your theme layer. Uh, so yeah, we add a pre-render callback. And then this is what the class looks like. And then, yeah, in the, your pre render method, then you uh, yeah, just, just see if it's array, and then, uh, yeah, then you re uh, render it as a string and then return it back. Um, something to note that I'm implementing the render uh, callback interface there. So that's a new feature. Um, I think I, I th at some point during the Drupal 8 uh, cycle, there's a security fix so that people couldn't put like, objects and stuff to tweak. So if you want to do any pre render callbacks, then they have to implement uh, the pre-render callback interface. So this is um, a few examples of how to use off canvas, drip off canvas. So one is through uh, just generic HTML. So you could have like a view block or a view page, um, and then you just attach the libraries, and then you can add some, uh, then you add your link, and then finally you got the dialog type and the dialog, um, data dialog render equals off canvas. So this one, I'm just running a page um, view, a page, of your page. Um, so when you click the link, it will fetch that page. And you can see here that I've passed a uh, term ID as an argument to it. Um, but you can also pass some other parameters like your current page uh, if you like want to share the current page or something like that, you know, for a social link or something. This is uh, the same version, but in a um, tweak file. So in the first, first one was just like copy and paste into your view. But this one is like if you have some link field, then 
uh, maybe you have some link field that you want to override the, the link and just keep the title, um, but you want to use the link field just so you want to keep in the template instead of like in a view or something because um, you want that like revision support and stuff. So it's basically the same, you just override and attach the libraries and things like that. Uh, there is one thing to note, um, you can see on line 46 there, that uh, we check if NC type and object exist. So when you're previewing content on Late Builder screen, uh, the way that generates dummy content uh, doesn't always have those elements there. So that can crash the manage the space screen. So we definitely don't want to do that. So that's why we just add that extra check there. But when it's usually rendered, those um, properties would exist. So there's a few other um, tricks you can do with uh, off canvas. So you can like react and add some classes um, to to the dialogue or to the body text and things. So uh, to this one is adding the my thing uh, suffix class to the dialogue. Um, so I've just simplified this, but you could have you know a few different dialogues, um, and so you have. So class suffixes would be like dynamic. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so in this one, we load up, we check all the links on the page, see if they have the my class, uh, my extra class class. Um, and then we add it to the to dialog, um, set, set an option to the dialog uh, option settings. So on the next slide is the dialog options. Uh, that's where we add the suffix classes in. Um, and then also we can to ch check if off canvas one that we're currently using uh, is the one that we want to target. So I've also set a property there called is my thing equal true, um, which we can check later. Or you can also set the width or you can just leave it um, default. So you don't actually have to do this JavaScript. It's only if you need to like customize it because like by default, it just has a default uh, classes. So if you have two versions of it, then you can't really target the, the version that you want. So how to use that my thing uh, property. So you have a few event listeners that you can use in JavaScript. You can have the before create and before close. So in this instance, um, maybe I want to make the body a little bit dark. So I want to add a class to the body tag. So when we create it, then we'll check, is it my thing dialog? And then we add the class and then same thing with the close. So when you close it, check if it's my thing and then we remove the body class. Uh, another thing you can also do with it is uh, you can detect the width of the off canvas. So maybe you have some element on the right hand side that's like stuck with the, um, the sidebar and moves with it. Or maybe you have some other um, element on the page that you want the width to be the same. Uh, so this is one, um, one way of tracking that. So yeah, it just adds um, two event listeners. One is like when it gets created and then we att attach it because every time you click on it, it creates a new element and then we've got to attach another event listener to that element to change um, a property of a different element with the width of what the, the sidebar is currently at. So I'm just going to go over a um, quick demo. Um, so there's two, two kind of demos here. Um, we'll go quickly over it. So one is the environment report website. So this is one of the websites that um, EY developed. Uh, and so we use Drupal of Canvas and Layer Builder in it. Uh, so if we go to a content page, uh, da, da, da. so in this one it's a report, so lots of um, scientists and stuff want to cite it. Mm -hmm. And so on this content page where we're talking about uh, air pollution, we can click this uh, button on the right-hand side. I think it's so, like this page, yep. Uh, and then it will fetch the taxonomy um, tag of the current page. So every uh, menu section um, is called a chapter. And so, yeah, each page is tagged with a chapter. So that's how on this um, sidebar we can fetch like the, uh, the author and um, the equality uh, title. And so, yeah, that's the contextual ID that's passed to that link. Uh, and then we also pass the current page so you can share it as well. Um, and then we've got some uh, JavaScript button so you can like generate uh, your citation file. So that's one way of using off canvas that I've found and I thought that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, if we go down to an accordion item, 
So, I'll go to it. There we go, to a picture. So, this one has um, the classes and stuff, as I said before. So, if we go into the inspect element, um, you can see. Oh yeah, so there's um, one of the fields which has the different classes on it. <coughs> That's the field again. Uh, so I did find it before. Ah, here we are. Yeah, so um, yeah, you got different sections, and so in the HTML, the different sections for that builder called regions, uh, and you can see here we've got um, block layout builder, and then um, you've got the fields there, and on this one, it should have the title. Oh, no, this one, sorry. Yeah, so we've got an, a view make called media um, to call layout, so you can see the different classes um, shown there. And one thing to note um, with this image one, is it has uh, two, uh, two layouts. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, okay. So we've got two layouts here. So not only can you run uh, Layout Builder from Ajax, um, you can also just have another div in the page uh, and then uh, run your content from there. So we have this um, picture of aircraft, uh, which is an image style. And then uh, if we uh, click to expand it, then um, it loads another div. And that's um, also through the dialog uh, uh, library as well. So the off canvas and the, the pop up also use the same uh, like base. So you can see that the, yeah, the body and stuff is all darkened now mm -hmm. as well. Um, I might just uh, leave it there. I think we're running a little bit out of time. Um, has anyone got any any questions um, on Layout Builder? I can bring up another demo site uh, if you've got any uh, specific questions on the files. But yeah, um, is there any questions around Layout Builder um, um, off Canvas? Uh, yes, sir? I'll bring the mic around. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's <coughs> after recording. Um, can you use the off canvas stuff on the admin pages easily? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Yep. So, uh, but you're, if you're using a different theme, then you'll need to, uh, yeah, might need to do like some functionality. So, if you have like a module, so if you're not using GovCMS, uh, you have your own module, you can add your CSS module to both admin and your theme side, your front end theme. Um, but yeah, if you're not using any extra module, then you might need to duplicate your CSS. But if you're not, don't need to uh, style at all, then uh, yeah, you can just plug it straight in and um, it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Uh, yeah. So um, when you're using layout, what sort of um, challenges do you get with that? Oh, sorry. So. Um, you switch from layout builder from older traditional, um, older traditional Drupal stuff. What sort of challenges did you get with layout builder that you wouldn't have got if you didn't? So, but of course it's great and it solves all sorts of issues and you, and you need it. Mm. But I often find when you change things, you get a, a new set of problems. Um, or there's things you could do easy for that are now more challenging than they used to be. Is there anything like that that you found in the, in the journey? Um. Uh, there are like some add-on modules not compatible that well. So as for this uh, field group, um, I think there's another one called link link class. I think there's another module that doesn't really play well. So uh, when you're showing a field, you have the formatters, um, and some modules can like override the formatter. Um, but sometimes, yeah, the layout builder for some reason the setting screen has a different incoming uh, like PHP array, 
Um, and so it, <clears throat> it errors out um, for that particular one. So yeah, for that one, you'll use like a view with the block and then show the, the field that way. Um, or you might have to create your own uh, field tweak override uh, if you need to add a specific class. But usually the inbuilt field classes are okay. Yeah, so there are a few things, um, but most of the time you can get around them with like views and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how much time have we got to go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, run for the code sprint as well tomorrow. Um, yeah, and if you have any feedback, uh, leave it on Drupal.org. And this is also uh, there's a demo site which I was going to show, but I ran out of time. But it's basically all that code snippets that I just showed you. Um, where uh, yeah, the, the Drupal code base is just there. It's just a default theme. Um, yeah, and you can just have poke around at the code and the copy of the slides are also <laughs> on that link as well. Uh, the end. Cool. All right, thanks everyone.